Hi there, my name is Shekhar Iyer. I'm the CEO of Arcus. Um, we are a networking company very much in the heart of what is happening as a transformation today that we see. Uh, particularly, everybody right now is talking about AI and the impact of AI and how that's actually going to transform pretty much every vertical in the industry. Uh, a lot of people don't think really about what the underlying infrastructure is that needs to be there in order for AI to become effective. I would say phase one of AI, which is what we have been seeing so far, has been focused a lot on training. Uh, because the whole problem initially was how do you get these giant models, how do you munch together data from all over, from different parts of the world, and then build these models to be useful for real life problems. We've kind of crossed that path right now. So you obviously have a number of, I would say, good large LLMs that people are starting to use and train and get incrementally better. The next big challenge is really going to be around proper inferencing. Because if you think about the applications of AI in widely diverse industries, whether that is oil and gas or financial services or uh, automated uh, autonomous driving, these are all different classes of problems. So just taking one giant large model and applying it to all these doesn't actually make sense. So therefore now there's a lot of talk about agentic AI and uh, distributed AI and how are you actually going to go and do inferences at the points of presence, at edges. And this now brings into focus the importance of the network. Because if all you had to do was train a large model and put a bunch of GPUs together and rack it up and have that compute, you could have some very closely knit proprietary networking like uh, InfiniBand based NVLink from NVIDIA and that could do the job. But now the moment you start taking that and expanding that out and you're going from single training data center to multiple training data centers and then going from those training data centers to the inference edges, it becomes extremely important for what that network fabric looks like, how efficient is that network fabric, uh, and in, in addition, how much of the kind of power consumption problem that everybody is talking about for large-scale data centers, how can that be helped by the network in terms of how it efficiently manages the bits and bytes that move across the uh, channels? And then finally, what is the cost of doing all of this? Because today, once again, AI is such a big force that people are not particularly thinking about exactly how many GPUs they need. I mean, they're really over-provisioning this in order to be able to not be stranded uh, for needs for the future. But soon, they're going to start thinking about what is the cost of all of this infrastructure? How do I manage to get the most efficiency out of my architecture? I mean, as an example, Arcus, we build out a networking fabric with an operating system that is highly distributable, very flexible. It can operate on multiple different uh, semiconductor platforms, uh, different uh, networking silicon platforms, and it can do very smart things like offloading IPsec when you run ArcOS on top of uh, NVIDIA's Bluefield DPUs and therefore make your AI data centers much more efficient and effective. That's one example. The other thing we do at Arcus is something called egress cost control. This is around managing the cost for exiting and entering hyperscalar highways at the router level. So because we can do that efficiently, we now know how to manage costs for large scale data movements from one point in the world to another point in the world. So my first example, IPsec offload off of a GPU stack. My second example, trying to manage the flows in a hyperscaler uh, cloud connected highway based on ma uh, minimizing the egress costs. If you put these two things together, you can now start seeing a full picture of distributed AI, how you can do that efficiently, how you can manage costs, and then how you can actually get and extract out more efficiency from your AI infrastructure. So one of the things that uh, you would notice today is if you're buying, uh, let's say you're building an AI data center. So the first thing you do is you go and buy a bunch of GPUs. And uh, of course, uh, who better to get that from than uh, NVIDIA? So you kind of buy a bunch of NVIDIA GPUs, you rack that up in a, uh, in a data center, 
and typically that gets connected in a tight format using InfiniBand networking or NVLink from NVIDIA. Now alongside this, Ethernet is starting to become a really big powerhouse in terms of how networking is going to be delivered for AI. Historically, Ethernet has been more useful for distributed connectivity and not as much for the low latency uh, in-band connectivity that you need for tightly coupled GPUs. But I think over time what you will see is that the technology advancement that Ethernet has will start offering companies alternatives to pretty much every part of the network. So you won't be able to go in and say, oh, this part of the network is requires a proprietary architecture and then this other part can be done using open networking like in uh, Ethernet offers. You're going to start seeing Ethernet spread across the landscape. It's going to become capable of doing everything from deep down networking inside the GPU stacks all the way to uh, between data center connectivity and uh, taking that connectivity from uh, training uh, data centers down to edge inferences and everything in between. So which is why we at Arcus are super excited about the expansive nature of what can be done with Ethernet in particular. And we are designing that in as we are thinking about the evolution of our own software, the operating systems, and then the other thing that's happening simultaneous with this is that networking silicon, whether that is coming from Broadcom or it's the Spectrum family coming from NVIDIA or others, are all now starting to become more and more capable and enabling this to become a reality. So a year or two or three from now, I would not be surprised if the entirety of networking can be offered using a disaggregated stack like what we present to our customers using best-in-class software, which obviously I hope that that's Arcus for all our customers, and then running on top of best-in-class hardware, semiconductor and silicon, all the way from everything Broadcom and NVIDIA produce down to processors coming from people like Intel and ARM uh, for, uh, let's say, kind of uh, lower latency type applications that can be done just on a compute infrastructure or in the cloud. So when we talk about AI, one other point that I'd like to talk about is security. Uh, I mean, you really can't complete a discussion around infrastructure without addressing the requirements for security. And in particular now, as you now think about uh, infrastructure that is pretty much going to be pervasive in every walk of life, every application, you cannot afford to essentially expose this to uh, greater um, vulnerabilities or other forms of uh, uh, open security issues. So then how does the industry start addressing this? One, I think, is uh, there is generally going to be a collapsing of some of the stacks. So rather than having multiple tiers of everything and making sure that you have uh, security at this boundary and that boundary and yet another boundary, you're going to start relying on basics like your network infrastructure to start offering up security that just comes um, without having to necessarily encode it or perhaps even add that as an optional add-on later. So I'll give you one example is uh, as we design routers at Arcus, as we design routing software, uh, we're always conscious that this is now going to need to be enabling the highest forms of security for our customers. So um, we do things like route origin validation, where we are able to recognize the um, entry points from which packets came to an Arcus router. And then once you know where this came from, if you had to do certain rule-based modification or certain policies that you want to impose, based on the routes and origins of those routes, then you can start doing that because we have now exposed that as an API to our customers to start programming on top of. So this is an example of how security gets baked in at the network level rather than becoming an afterthought uh, for someone to deal with later. So the more AI becomes the norm in terms of how people are building and deploying applications, the more we are going to have performant infrastructure built at that network level, but equally make it 
much more secure than today's networking infrastructure is for customers dealing with applications before the era of AI.